The process to alter Nigeria's national revenue allocation formula has begun. Benue State Governor Samuel Autumn is now advocating, you know, a change in how revenue is shared amongst the federal government, states and local government. We've invited a public affairs analyst, Mr. Nick Agule, um, to shed more light on this with us. Good morning, Mr. Agule. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. All right. I want to lay out the facts first of all. Um, presently, Nigeria's allocation formula is 52.63% um, for the state, for the federal government. And we also have 26.72% for states and 20.6% for the local government areas. Now, this formula is what, we've been in, is what has been in use since the 90s. So do you think it's time for a review or we're just fine? Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, to be honest, uh, my view is that we should not even be talking about revenue allocation. Because well, where is this revenue coming from? The revenue is being derived principally from the oil wealth in the Niger Delta and the taxation being raised. Uh, from federally collected uh, taxes. And uh, we should even have this in the bottle economy where the two tiers of government, the state and the local government, are looking up to their mother, uh, the federal government, to breastfeed them every month. Agreed that if a mother breastfeeds children, it gets to a point where the children are able to fend for themselves. And my children is 60 years old. And we have this state that have been in existence from 60 years, from 40. I think the, 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 the youngest of our state should be like 30 years old. How can a mother still be breastfeeding a 30-year-old person? This democracy that we, we copy from the United States of America, there is no revenue sharing by the federal government of the United States. So we want to copy a system of government that unfortunately and tragically too, we decided to copy left instead of copy right. The United States don't share revenue. Joe Biden does not share revenue to any governor or county in the United States. They generate their own revenue. We need to interest Nigerians to know that in the United States, whose democracy we copy, it is the state and local government that send money to the center and not the other way around as we are practicing. In Nigeria today, in all the 36 states of the Federation and the FCC, every state has been endowed with enough resources that if the governors and local government chairmen are not lazy, and they look inward to unlock the value embedded in their state, Nobody will be talking about looking to Abuja for money. This is my view about this matter. All right. Um, Mr. Gole, well, since we currently have, um, uh, you know, the current format that we're working with, until we're able to achieve, you know, a change in format and let states now start to depend solely on what they can generate, um, I, I, I want us to, you know, first of all, look at what we currently, you know, have closely. Um, why does it feel like regardless of how much these states get every month, it's still not enough to achieve what they need because they still are seeking, you know, more funds. You still see states lobbying for loans from, you know, outside the country even. You still see um, states seeking grants, um, you know, to finance themselves better. Um, in 2020, uh, a state like um, Aquaibom received about 146 billion naira from the federal government. Um, the uh, Delta State, I, I think, received about 186 billion from the federal government, and it still doesn't seem to be enough. So, would you say that this is because of mismanagement of funds, or the state really just needs more money to be able to function? This is the brutal truth. 
The brutal truth is that there is no state in Nigeria that depends on federal allocation that is going to develop. It's impossible. If you check what is happening, when the federally allocated funds get to the state, the state pay salaries, pay costs of running government, and state officials make away with what is left. And that is what happened year in, year out. Year in, year out. We are having expectations of development, having expectations of still government working, having expectations of still better schools, better health care, better roads, better working, coming into our homes, and it's not happening. And it has not happened. Look, we, we started this current democracy in 1999. So for most states, they either have their third governor or in some states even fourth governor. So you have three people who have come into the governor, depending on federal allocation, they made electoral promises, every year they made budgets, but still the states are not developing. I mean, it is said that it is only a madman that keeps doing the same thing and expecting different results. The state simply needs to use what is coming from the center to unlock the values embedded in their own state. You spoke about Governor Otom. And Governor Otom is my governor. I am from Benue, and I can tell you that the biggest resort of Benue State is the fertile land with a good climate to match. What has Governor Otto done to unlock value in the agricultural space in his six years in office? He's done nothing. He drives around, he looks at the fertile land, right, fallow, but it doesn't strike him. That is, that is where the money is. Because if Benue mechanizes and begins to cultivate the soil, money will be coming from the United States to buy food, will be coming from Europe to buy food, from Australia, money will be coming from all over the world into Benue to buy food. And that is when we'll be talking about government having enough money to develop the state. Mr. So long as Governor Otto carries on like a cashier, going to the federal government to get allocation, come and pay salaries, salaries that he's not even paying. He's owing salary, he's owing pension, he's owing contractors. You can see that this money is not going to be enough. So in 2023, Nigerians have to look carefully. Any candidate standing for the position of governor or local government chairman, or even Nigeria as a company, that has no idea as how they will look inwards to generate value and develop their state, you give them a vote, and the same situation is going to continue. As we're discussing today. Mr. Mr. Agule, and it's not enough for them. Mr. Agule, I need to ask you this question. Do you think Nigeria's current political structure allows for such autonomy of state? Or do you think we would need that restructuring that we all keep talking about? Uh, the, 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 let me answer your question in two parts. Yes, Nigeria needs restructuring. And when I mean restructuring, I mean that the federal government has to release majority of the 68 items on the exclusive list of our constitution. The federal government should not have more than eight items on the exclusive list. What should be on the exclusive list should be defense, foreign policy, economy, like currency issue, because we have to issue one currency, 
Those are the kind of things that should be on the exclusive list of Nigeria's constitution. The rest of the items on the constitution should be devoted to the state and local government. These are governments that are closest to the people. When we call ourselves the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it's a scam. We are not running a federal government. We are not running a federal system of government. We are running a unitary system of government. So how can we call ourselves a federal republic and we are in actual fact running a unitary system of government? So as far as restructuring is concerned, that is my mind about it. But let me now answer your second question. You are saying even in the current structure, at the state's handicap, in terms of unlocking value in their state, because every state in Nigeria, like I said, is blessed. You see that they have land for agriculture, they have mineral resources in the ground to be tapped, or they have tourism potential. Nigeria is blessed all around. Can the state unlock value, even with the current structure that we have? And the answer is a capital yes. When discussing governor of Tom, what stops governor of Tom to mechanize it as the culture of Benway? Nothing, nothing. The federal government will not stop him. Nothing stops him. He has all the powers to till the soil in Benway and bring in value from countries abroad coming to buy food. So pounds, dollars, everything will be coming to Benue to buy food. That is when the government will we develop Benue State. And this applies to every other state in Nigeria. Um, Mr. Gole, you, uh, you mentioned earlier that um you know, in, 20, in the next elections, you know, uh, citizens should, or the electorate, you know, should look out for uh, governors or candidates who have ideas uh, that can, you know, unlock these potentials. You know, I, I wanted to quickly also mention that, you know, these ideas, you know, are, are very, very many and campaign promises, you know, can be sweeter than sugar sometimes. Um, but it's what happens after they get into power that is next. So I, I want to, you know, get your view on what makes governors in Nigeria so lazy what makes them get into that position and completely lose interest in internally generated revenue and looking out for ways that it can boost that gen uh, revenue and how can the electorate ensure that they don't continue to allow such characters get into office i i want, thank you for the for the for the word you have used lazy and that is exactly what these guys are. These guys are lazy. All the governors, except for a few, and local government chairmen in Nigeria are lazy. And the reason they are lazy is because there is a big mama called the federal government who is breastfeeding them every month through the federal Counts Allocation Committee, sending their billions of Naira monthly. Look, um, as I'm here, if I was guaranteed that my father would be sending me a check of 10 million every month for all the days of my life, I could probably not work, I could probably not do anything to generate income for myself. And this is what is the problem. That we copy democracy from America, then we are running it in our own way. If you buy a car, you have to run the car in accordance with the manufacturer specification. You cannot buy a car and the manufacturer says, break to. A car using the brake to try to move forward. And they try to, to slow down. This is what is happening to Nigeria. We copy the democracy that says the local council states should generate revenue and send to the center. Our own is that we are now using the center to send money to the state and local government. The opposite direction is not going to work for us. You see that we go and question our own system of government? 
But if it is this America or we either oppress it the way the Americans are doing it, or we are lost. Now let, let me let me now take take the second part of your question. How do Nigerians know who will meet up with their promises? 2023 elections are coming. We have so many people in my state, Benue. We have more than 100 individuals that have come forward saying they want to be governor. How can the electorate sift between those who have their eyes on their location and those who really want to develop the state or working value? The simple answer is the electorate needs to look at a degree. They need to look at track record. They need to see what is People have done in the past. Elections should be on what the people have done in the past and not what they are promising. Yeah, but if a man who never successfully ran anything, who never had a track record of running anything successfully, is promising heaven and earth. You know that that man is not going to get what he does not have. So the electorate needs to look at what this candidate have done in the past. There's enough history for them to use in yeah, Nisagule, I, I, I want you to, you know, to just quickly remember, and I, I, apologies that we're moving away from the discussion on states and now talking about the electoral process, but I, I think that one of the challenges is, is the fact that we have a, a, a seemingly flawed electoral process. And, you know, if you do not get, you know, parties <clears throat> picking the right candidates, you can't really make this selection that you're referring to. Um, because it's really who is on the ballot that determines who gets voted for. Um, so there is that. But even after the elections, you know, when these you know, people get into power, there's still the need for people, the citizens, to be able to make stronger demands of their governors. The people of Benue State should be able to remind Governor Tom of how much he received from the federal government, you know, in, in 2020 and since the time that he's been there, and also how much he's been able to generate as internally generated revenue since the time that he's been in that yes. position, and remind him that he has absolutely no excuse to be demanding more money when he, he's not been able to show working. Thank you very much for that question. What you are saying is actually up. You see, democracy has pillars. These pillars must be in place to support democracy to run very well. And one of the pillars is the sanctity of the electoral process. You also have the independence of the judiciary. You have the rule of law. You have the independence of the three arms of government, the executive legislature, the judiciary. Without this ingredient, democracy isn't going to work. And this is why part of the problem. And I mean we're discussing today, we're discussing economy. But this economy will not work if the electoral process is not producing the right managers of the economy. And this is why it is and that President Mohamed Buhari is not yet taking the electoral bill into law. He went to a pass, partly before the National Assembly went to recess. The Petroleum Industry Bill and the Electoral Bill. The President has simply attempted to the Petroleum Industry Bill. Why is he not taking to the Electoral Bill? So that we can have a better process that we win out. Those who don't have anything to offer, they, they have only their eyes on federal location, from becoming governors, local government chairman, or even the president. And now you have made another solid point. And that point is even if the electoral process as small as it is, produces governors and local government chairman or even president. The citizens have been given the one power the constitution to checkmate. 
those elected to lead them. Nigeria has a unique situation where we only have a in the democracy of the nation every four years, in the four year cycle. We elect people, they are not governing well, and we are hoping for the next election. No. The Constitution has provided us the power to follow through the governor's process and be participants in the democracy election. There are actually two things that are there are three four parts of government. You have the executive, the legislature, the judiciary, and the people. And the people have their power. Now, let me also address another matter. Granted that the electoral process is flawed, and the president is developing code from signing a new bill, if we come to 2023, and President Bukhari has not attempted the new electoral bill into, into law. What option do we have as Nigerians? We have two options. Is it that we sit at home, not come out to vote, or we come out to vote? Unfortunately, option one, sitting at home, we only ensure continuity of the misgovernment that we are all crying about. The only hope that will stand a chance of something changing is if Nigerians come out to vote. Do not to vote. There were 30 million votes in the presidential election in 20, uh, in, uh, the last election was in, in what, 20, 2019. 2019, yes. Yeah? 30 million votes in 2019 presidential election. What if we have 50 million, 80 million, 90 million Nigerian people in 2023? To show that number we overwhelm the process and Nigerians will be able to get leaders that they deserve. So when people sit at home and expect change, change is not going to happen. So even as strong as the electoral process is, it is a big chance for us to have any change from the current trajectory that we are on. And Nigeria must approach any opportunities to begin to register, get their voter card, be ready for the pass in 2023. Okay, Mr. Agule, um, at the beginning of the show, you mentioned that the focus of state should be on revenue generation, right? And you mentioned um, sources of that generation, which should be um, oil and non-oil um, sources, including taxation. So I want us to take the example of the River State's um, case. So River State actually took the FIRS to court, basically challenging um, who had the constitutional duty to receive um, a VAT, value-added tax in the state. And the court actually favored River State government, said, saying that they have the right to collect taxes. But just yesterday, um, we have a statement from the FIRS um, Director of Communications warning residents of River State to continue to pay their taxes to the FIRS or face penalties because they have you know, gone ahead um, for a stay of execution on that matter. So really, what, what, where does this leave us? Where the River State government you know, won that judgment and it all seemed like, oh, this is something other states should emulate. So you know, states can go ahead and generate revenue internally, collect their taxes, so that they can be able to do the things that states should do for their citizens. But now that you know, we have a, a case where the FIRS is challenging that judgment, appealing that judgment, where does that leave us regarding um, revenue generation for states and um, allocation? And let me answer your question in two parts. The first part is that we are running a democracy where the rule of law has to be supreme. So the Nipah State government has won the case. If indeed the FIRS has got a stay of execution, they got a judgment for a stay of execution, the judgment of the lower court, then River State indigents will have to obey the ruling of the court by continuing to pay taxes to FIRS. But if FIRS is yet to get that 
pay off the corruption. It then means that the judgment of the of the court has obtained at River State is subsisting. And River State indigents will be breaking the law if they continue to pay taxes to the FIRS. So that is one point. The other part is that what is my view about states collecting their taxes? And my answer is yes. States should be collecting their taxes. You see an anomalous no situation where there are some states in the north. You know, they have said they, they, they have Sharia. They will not allow the sale of cigarettes, cohort, and things like that. Okay? Then you have states in the south, like Lagos, Rivers, and Co. They are selling alcohol, cigarettes, and all those things. And the VAT that is being generated from the sale of alcohol is coming into a central port held by the FIRS. And then the FIRS now divides this VAT and gives it to the states in the north. Who does allow the sale of alcohol? How does that work? Hmm. Who can be in a federation and things like that are happening? So every state should be empowered to, I mean, VAT, VAT is a consumer tax. If you go to the United States, from where we copy the democracy, it is the state and local country that collect consumer tax. It is the state and local government. You don't expect the federal government to come down and be collecting small, small things at consumer tax. We should have a federal government that is that is dealing with bigger things, bigger fishes like defense, foreign policy, and those kind of things. So River State government is right in the steps that they have taken. We believe that that judgment should be subsisting in all the states of the Federation. Let all the states begin to collect their local taxes. That's my view on it. All right. All right, Mr. Nico Goulet, Public Affairs Analyst. We appreciate your perspectives on the program this morning. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, up next, we'll be taking a look at the ranking of universities in Nigeria uh, side by side her global counterparts after the break. Stay with us. <laughs>